Oh, you got the Lego Optimus? It's like being in a toy store. $50? Uh, you're probably looking at closer to 100 US. 100 US for that? That's the original, um, the original G1. This is how I got this guy when I was like four years old, back in 84. That's, that's the guy. The powder keg is one of my favorites from this line too. Gotta love the 80s. Welcome back to Matt Cart. We're on a bumpy road all the way to Ajax to check out Kevin's Transformers collection. And we have Chad here in the car, who's a friend of Kevin, and he let me know that Kevin might be looking to get rid of some Transformers or some other toys. He's a massive collector, and I can't wait to see this huge collection. But it's gonna take us about a half an hour to get there, so we are just keeping our eyes on the road, drinking some coffee, trying to be safe, but it's a very, very bumpy ride so far. My God, this camera is shaking like crazy. Yeah, welcome to the 401 here. So how close are we right now? We're roughly, uh, I wanna say about 10 minutes away from the biggest Transformers collection I've seen or hands-on other than a convention itself. That is pretty, pretty amazing. Yeah. I'm hoping that he also has some Lego or Marvel Legends. I believe he does. Um, he also has a lot of uh, nostalgic toys, okay. uh, vintage toys from the 80s. Oh, nice. Yeah, so it's going to be exciting, that's for sure. So hopefully you guys are into retro content because we got a ton of it today. I'm also bringing Kevin some Transformers that I've gotten at various garage sales and church sales, and hopefully this can sweeten the deal today. I got you a gift too. <laughs> Check those guys out. Just uh, a lot of stuff that I found <laughs> at garage sales church sales and stuff like, no shit yeah. i actually had that when i was a kid <laughs> really yeah yeah i did totally i had that i had that same one that's an old uh pullback uh i think it's a gobot isn't it i think it is a yeah go there's I another gobot in there i think that's too. insane man there's a few of them um that's funny they say tomy the ones that are yeah yeah that one is i think that might be a newer one that one's, yep, that you one. have look at this guy yeah that's the old um yeah the old mcdonald's happening. yeah 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 that's what he said too yeah what? That's and then awesome. there's one that's newer. There's a little bigger, but uh, I just thought whatever it was yeah. in. Yeah, I was like, I'm not listing those on eBay anyways. <laughs> so I thought I'd bring that's it for awesome. you. Thank you. Oh, you got the Lego Optimus? Yeah, and then I've oh, got wow. this one here. I still haven't built yet. But my wife got me this for Father's Day. Oh, nice. Yeah, the Batman, the head sculpt. Yeah, yeah I got the 89 uh, vehicle. Nice. The Sauron Build-A-Figure. Is oh. actually like, pretty dope. I didn't realize it was that nice of a figure. Oh, anymore. yeah. The paint detail is, is crazy yeah. on this one. I missed out on that figure. And that's Point the original paint. from the 80s. Yeah, that is ridiculous. So that's the costume, and you put it over yeah, top you put of it. it over top of it. That's, that's really that's cool. That's like the, the whole line. There's something new in Gotham City. It's Batman, like you've never seen him before. Hey, Joker, a battery surprise! Missed me. Time for a change. It's like being in a toy store. This, this, this is the one here, Matt, that started it all back in 84. That's, that's the guy. That's a G1 Optimus that's Prime. That's the original broken stack played with until it was basically loose and wobbly and destroyed. Transformers, more than meets the eye. Are these ones Robotech? Oh, oh, these are oh, G1? Okay. So that's a great question. So, yeah. so this, this is Jetfire. So right. that was um, that was a Robotech mold that, they, that Takara repurposed to basically be this guy. So that's the um, oh, that's the Fan Toys version, Fan Toys Phoenix. That's what he looked like in the G1 cartoon. Hmm. But when they went to when they went to the production of the toy, they just repurposed the Macross uh, VF1 fighter. Peter Cullen, the voice of Optimus Prime. So yeah, the signature right there, Optimus yeah. Prime. And did you get this? So your friend got this for you yeah. at like a convention? Yep. Yeah. What basically uh, G1, you know, kind of loved it as a kid. Uh, I like the gimmicks. Like if you look at a lot of my collection, with the exception of some of the figures, most of the most of the toys that like they had some sort of gimmick to it. I love Transformers. Well, Optimus Prime, he's the epitome of everything good. So basically, as a kid, you know, you had this toy, which I mean, back in the day, that that was that was pretty wild. You know, transformed, and you know, what what kid doesn't like robots that or vehicles that become robots? Well, now they bring out the adult version. So, you know, as a child, you're playing with this, thinking that it's that. Now, as an adult, you actually have that to play with. Like it's uh, it's pretty wild. So, this is this is more of an MP line. 
uh, what they did was so um, Hasbro, Takara, they brought out an MP line uh, that was was scaled up figures, and then you had other companies jump on the bandwagon and start making what we refer to as third party transformers that are the MP scale. So not all of these are actually Takara. Uh, there's a mixture of uh, fans toys, uh, make toys, perfect effects, uh, X trans bots. But for me, um, it, it's I, I'm not really brand specific. I just kind of like whatever one has the best mold for the character that I prefer. Some guys want cartoon accuracy. Some guys want toy accuracy. Me, I mean, if it looks cool, you know, it fits. It fits. It's 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 a look that I like. You know, I'll, I'll pick it up and add it to my collection. Masking the Starcom stuff here. So um, Mask, I had a couple pieces when I was a kid, and then yet again, you know, COVID, the pandemic, whatever. I was like, oh, you know what? Let's let's see if I can find them and. Just got back into the line and, and uh, you know, I, I like to tinker with stuff. I got a little, my little workshop set up over there. So, you know, I'd buy ones that were broken or, you know, people just didn't want them, lot buys, whatever. And I've actually made complete working versions of the vehicles uh, from a bunch of like, you know, guy, people's junk. Um, you know, same thing with the Starcom, like the Starcom down below. Not really many people knew about Starcom over here. I had a couple of them when I was a kid, but like the little gear motors, the way they transform, uh, to, to, to find them in working condition is actually pretty difficult. So a lot of those I've fixed myself too. There's a there's a forum um, or a Facebook group actually where a lot of guys are doing some really neat things with them with 3D printing for the motors and whatnot. So there's a whole bunch of way more diehard guys than I'm out there that are actually fixing these things over in Europe. Flip the button. Um, yeah, they usually, they will pop in there, but yeah. Oh, wow. So all of these have like the whole little motor gimmick thing. Put this one here. There's the button. Okay, and then like the, you know, just little, little gimmicky things. You got the little parasites here. The Shadow Parasite Attack Fighter, a one-man gunship with a weapon system that can blast anything out of the air. Oh. And the little, you, you know, it'll fire the little land roller out. And don't ask what the acronym for mask is, like Mobile Armored Strike Command or something. Mask, buzzard and delight. Each sold separately with two figures. Sky Commanders. And their playmates and playmates, they also made Ninja Turtles, I'm not they mistaken. Ninja Turtles, they also made Exo Squad, which is this kind of group just hanging underneath, hence the bright colors, vibrant colors. Exo Squad wasn't quite an 80s toy. It came out in, I think, 92, 93. But when you actually, you know, play with the figures, they're they're just it's a fun figure. A lot of detail, you know, a lot of articulation. I mean, these things are neat. They've got all kinds of little gear motors. They actually will move, will move up and down the ropes. You know, like this one here. You just it's like a emergency attack. You, you pop. Oh, here we go. As it breaks now. <laughs> you know, like this guy oh, can yeah. kind of roll up and drop down. Uh, this this will actually unclip from the main drag wire and it goes into its docking station here when it's not super jam packed in a really tight shelf. But you know, you kind of catch the drift. You know, this one here has got like deployable shields. Oh, good catch. Deployable shields that pop out. Uh, it's just there's a whole bunch of neat little gimmicks on these toys, man. That uh, you know, I just like them. I find toys today lack the substance. You know, they, they lack the creativity and the imagination to play with. We're in crew! Levanus and his Neo-Sapien E-Frames are attacking! As I attack on, Armored Canopy down! Get into action along with me, Wolbronski! Uh, another toy line that I just loved as a kid. They basically took, you know, a little G.I. Joe figure, same points of articulation, made it into a six-inch scale. I mean, this guy, Powder Keg, is one of my favorites from this line, too. You know, full armor, he, you know, everything can come on, come off. The TV show was pretty wild. You know, same thing. You've got like a a group of, of, of police officers that all have their own like kind of futuristic gimmick representing all different parts of the world come together to, you know, basically catch all these like crazy, you know, crux. crux. You know, since basically cops and crux or cops, whatever, you know, the toys were a lot of fun. Then these ones had a cap gimmick in them. A lot of the uh, a lot of the guns and everything you could actually slide the uh, the red roll caps in, you know, through here. 
on this gun, all of them, they had a cap gimmick and you know, you hit a button and it'd, it'd fire the cap as you went to fire the gun. Like this one here is like just a little, it's a little vehicle, but you just drop the cap in. I don't remember if you remember these from back in the day, you just drop in, boom, there, fire the cap. Off. Cops and crooks go separately with caps. So this is Buttons McBoom Boom. And if you actually open his chest up, look, he's got two hidden guns in his chest too. I love the play features of some of these old 80s toys, like these cop figures. That is amazing. Very articulated as well for 80s. Look at the arm swivel. Holy cow. You can see where Marvel Legends was getting their ideas. So now you know how much this guy's worth. I'm guessing complete, complete with the stand and its briefcase and gun, $50. Uh, you're probably looking at closer to 100 US. 100 US for that? Yeah. Holy cow, I got a Search Valley Village for her. Yeah, yeah, go for it, man. Oh my God, that is crazy. All of this stuff, yet again. Like, yeah, you, know, you people, won't see these out of Valley people Village. People don't get though. it. Like, it just, and it, well, you might, but it's one of those things where not, it's, it's, a, not, it's a bit of an obscure line. The one thing that I find uh, hard to relate to now that they've kind of taken over, we got like six inch action figures. Um, it's like in the 80s, they weren't sure what they wanted, right? No. So nothing was really to scale. You could go with the Transformers even. Yeah. Um, but well, I think also, too, it was the cost of producing the figures, too, right? But yeah. Like, you look at the price points of the Marvel Legends now, they're like $44 for, yeah. for like a six-inch figure. I'm sure back in the 80s when, you know, it was the same issue, going from a big G.I. Joe Barbie doll down to a three-and-a-quarter-inch figure for Star Wars line. Yeah. You know, like, that saved them a lot on produ production costs. Yeah, taking a look at, like, you could tell the difference between Mattel, and then you have your Kenner, and then you have... Um, LNG. LNG for your Thundercats. Yeah. Obviously, I came here to see if I can uh, get something <laughs> off of your collection today. Uh, yeah. Are you willing to part with any of the Transformers that you have here? No, 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 <laughs> man. No, are you kidding me, dude? This no. is this is a labor of love. Okay. This is sentimental. All right. You know, I appreciate that. I, I honestly, I do. Is there anything else though that you'd be willing yeah, to potentially got, part with? I've today? got my, my trade pile and everything over in the corner. We can go look through. Oh okay. yeah, I think you can go like. through that. Sure, yeah. some Marvel Legends I see. Uh, Negan. Oh one. yeah, a lot of people are dressed up as Negan at conventions. Oh wow, these DC superheroes, yeah. like superpowers. Holy yeah, crap! Some, some Starcom. Two. Oh wow. Okay. All right. So you got X. <laughs> Wow, that is pretty good. And you got Pyro there, yeah. a Voltron. You got a, this Starcom? Yep. Starcom. Okay, so that's like an arcade, a pinball oh, machine not, there. Not super down for... Uh, oh, Marvel Legends are... You can put those in there too. Oh, wow. Yeah, okay, I like that Doom there right off the bat. That looks really sweet. And you do have one Transformer here. Yeah. That is a uh, Dinobot, it looks like. Oh, wow. Yeah, this is there's some more cut. Transformers. Stuff that didn't make the cut. Didn't make the cut. Didn't make the cut. And then there's these ones here. Okay, so this, I do like a, I do like loose action figures for display purposes. So some of these might interest me. You know, I would be interested in this, but honestly, I just don't think you'd part with it for at least not the amount that I have. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> But these guys, I feel like I'm pretty confident that we could probably work something out for this one. Would you take 80 for all four? Uh, I'll do 60. 60? Yep. Okay. okay. Let's do it. Wow. Thanks again, Kevin, for showing us your fantastic Transformers and 80s collection. And you also had some Marvel Legends to share. And we picked up a few today. And I am very, very grateful for this. I've always wanted this Colossus in my collection. And now I can add them to that today. Thank you again, Kevin, and I hope you guys enjoyed today's videos. And remember, may your carts always be full.